I'm so glad to know that you are still tuning in to our channel. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And as well, we thank you for sharing the contents of all our channels. Uh, we kindly remind you to continue subscribing and to share all this content such that more and more people join us as we aim to transform our country for the better. Uh, right about now, we have come to the third edition of the audio version of the politics of the Banyampi that uh, uh, we read, uh, we partly read in part one and part two on our media platforms. I remind you that we have several uh, online media platforms that include Joseph Tamale Mirundi as our Facebook page, Tamale Mirundi official as this YouTube page, we also have Tamale Mirundi official as our Instagram page, and the Twitter at Joseph Mirundi. The author of this book uh, sends regards and uh, uh, wants to remind you to keep yourself updated by subscribing and uh, clicking the notification bell on YouTube such that you always have, uh, you always keep yourself updated wherever we post all our books. Uh, recently, we had a part one and a part two. So if you are joining us right now on part three, uh, we request you to go back and find part one and two such that you get into part three when you know how we have been are flowing. Today we are getting to part three which has a, which starts with a big heading independent African leaders and why they created Obunyampi uh, politics. But before that let me bring to you the author himself as he explains the title of this book specifically what the word Obunyampi or Abanyampi uh, really means before I proceed. The politics of Banyampi. Mm. <laughs> 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 Sebuti, <laughs> Kabila muna piyomo ano? Let's get straight into reading part three of uh, the politics of the Banyampi by Joseph Tamale Mirundi. In my earlier submissions, I had clarified that the most contentious issue and the biggest challenge to African leaders was that majority were not sons of traditional leaders. In many cases during colonial times, traditional leaders collaborated with the colonialists and wanted to maintain the status quo. This meant that all those who were agitating for independence were not from royal families but from Bakopi families. Obote and Chiwanuka were from Bakopi families. In essence, those from royal families and the chiefs who had acquired Milo land in Buganda and in other kingdoms were comfortable with, with the status quo. This explains why the issue of land ownership remains unresolved to today owing to the 1900 Buganda Agreement which dished out 8,000 square miles of land to only 8,000 chiefs. It is the beneficiaries of this, of this well-orchestrated scheme that resist reforms in the management of land. However, the new group that took power at independence was aware of the state of affairs and therefore wanted to create a new arrangement. 
Their new status, once legitimized, was to be above the one of the traditional chiefs. In Uganda and Botswana, there was a plan to retain traditional leaders as new leaders of the new political arrangement. That's why the first president of the independent Uganda was Sir Edward Mtesa, who was also the king of Buganda by then. This arrangement could not work because it was based on falsehoods. Obote wanted to use Mutesa and dump him, which he did. Secondly, Mutesa became president owing to the 1962 constitution, which dictated that the position could be occupied by a traditional leader. The ruling party had powers to choose from others once it took power. It was not mandatory that it had to be the Kabaka of Buganda. Obote later admitted that choosing Mutesa as the first ceremonial president of Uganda was part of a plot to undermine the king's authority and influence. However, the new African leaders had, re had to resort to African tradition to intimidate their subjects. They lacked royal blood and therefore Ordinary people who needed extraordinary powers to make them look and act superior in the eyes of their subordinates. That is why Mobutu Seseseko or Zaire did two things that shocked the world. He always wore a hat made of leopard skin to scare people. When he finally acquired the national television, daily programming would open with a portrait of Mobutu descending from heaven. Whenever Mobutu went on foreign trips, his henchmen, in this, in this case I call Banyampi, would spread rumors that he had seen, that they had seen him in his home at Badoliti, as if to portray that Mobutu could be in two places at the same time. Kenneth Kaund of Zambia dropped out in junior, junior 2, an equivalent of senior 2 in Uganda. He could not control his emotions and weeping in the public was his habit. He could be seen waving a white handkerchief which he used to wipe his tears in public. He proudly loved to be, he proudly loved to be addressed as, a, as Dr. Kaunda, thanks to Lusaka University that awarded him an honorary degree. He purposely did this to compensate his academic limitations and to just, justify that he was the right person to rule Zambia. Nyerere often traveled with a short stick, which they called Rungu, which the Masai used to conquer lions. It was also reported that Nyerere's mother had one breast. This was purposely coined to make him appear as a superhuman. Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya also could not part with his short stick, which resembled that of Nyerere. He wore a black jacket and a necklace he got from Soviet Stalin, though he portrayed himself as a capitalist. His name Kamau was dropped and his parentage remains unknown. His successor, Daniel Arap Moy, also carried a rungu, which he always raised to the population during public functions and gatherings. In Uganda, Milton Obote carried a walking stick, while Aida Amin used to tell Ugandans that he knew the day he was going to die. Having enumerated all these facts, this is the gist of my submission. My submission is based on the recent alleged scam at Bank of Uganda. I have written much about the mafia and mafiaism in Uganda. I first saw this story in Red Paper, volume number 19, number 120, Thursday, June, on the 13th of 2019. This paper reported as follows. The shaky health of Bank of Uganda governor 
Emmanuel Tumusime Mutebile at 70 years, has caused paralysis at the institution. The paper further reported that insiders had intimated to them that the governor Mutebile had not stepped in office for two months. His absence, according to their sources of the red paper, had caused the power virtue at the central bank, leaving most of the workers worried. The paper added that some senior members of the staff of Bank of Uganda are seething with anger following the governor's decision to delegate most of his duties to his junior staff that are said to be running the show. That according to sources the governor spends that according to sources the governor spends most of his time at his residence in Kololo while sensitive issues are handled by junior staff at Bank of Uganda. The paper still asserts that the recent incident when Bank of Uganda delayed to issue a red flag notes on Kenya's new currency notes was an indication of how dire the situation is. Kenya unveiled new bank notes on June 1, 2019 and announced plans to phase out old notes in the dominations of 1,000 Kenya shillings by October 1, 2019. This story was followed by another in a, in a new vision bearing a screaming headline indicating that police had raided Bank of Uganda and arrested its top officials. This is how the Mafia in Uganda initiate their battles. I have explained elsewhere that the Mafias do not allow people to discuss the real issues. 2. Mafias operate like pythons and initiate attacks with smear campaigns against their targets. 3. They use the media to launch bombardments against their preferred targets. 4. They create a jirikiti, a tradition, a tradition in Buganda that a tree must be identified where dead dogs are thrown. Previously, they used to throw out Buganda, but now that the Buganda have been ejected from influential government positions, they have turned to other tribes. After humiliating their targets, mafias offer their victims a peripheral job in order to keep them in government after their original job has been grabbed. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This has been part three. Uh, we shall begin at the situation at Bank of Uganda and the Banyampi politics. We kindly uh, request you to share this, the content of this channel. Subscribe and click the notification bell such that wherever we post something, uh, you're the first to know what we have posted. Joseph Tamale Mirundi also has other uh, social media pages. Joseph Tamale Mirundi on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Instagram, we have our handle as Tamale Mirundi Official, and we have our Twitter handle as Joseph Mirundi. As well, uh, Tamale Mirundi Official is our YouTube channel. Continue subscribing. Till then, see you then. <music>